Hello, everyone, and welcome back from our first break. Oh, very important. Mute the laptop from the hallway track so it doesn't bleed through, because I've done that before. Um, so uh, once again, please feel free to go over and join us in the hallway track during the breaks. Uh, see how what could go wrong. That's right, Warner. Um, feel free to join us. We're chatting about all sorts of random things and seeing the inside of people's houses and so forth, um, <laughs> or wherever people are joining from. So. During the next break, hop on over, come and chat with everyone. Uh, but for now, our next talk is going to be about using FreeBSD um, back off from Corbin. So I'm going to turn it over to Corbin. Yeah, hello, everybody. Um, uh, yeah, hello, everybody, and thank you for joining my talk about TPU and TPM. Uh, to pass through with Beehive. So before we start with talk, let me uh, introduce myself. So my name is Corbin Kerner. I'm a software developer and focusing on x86 and especially on its hypervisor technologies. I'm working for a back of automation and we use industrial automation and to uh, for our solutions, we use PC-based control. Okay. So let's start with our talk. First of all, I want you to give uh, you a live demonstration how GPU and TPM2 pass through works. Uh, after that, I will explain how it works, uh, then which systems are supported, and last but not least, how you can test GPU and TPM2 pass through. Okay, my physical system, which I'm using for the live demonstration, is an industrial PC from Back of Automation. It uses an uh, Intel Core i5 processor, and is, uh, the operating system is based on FreeBSD 13. Okay, so let's start with my live demonstration. Um, for the live demonstration, I'm using a KVM switch, which is connected to my industrial PC. So maybe for those who don't know um, what, GPU or TPM pass through is. Um, you can um, assign a GPU to a VM guest from Beehive. And so the um, guest has full access to the physical device and therefore gains um, the best performance. Okay, so I wrote a um, small script to run a Windows VM with. Um, GPU pass through. So it uh, deassigns the GPU driver from Beehive, um, loads a special PCI pass through driver, and passes it to the guest. So as you can see, Windows directly starts and shows us its um, yeah, Windows uh, boot screen. And yeah. So one additional information about Windows. Um, so, so the TPM, which is um, stands for Trusted Platform Module, is a um, security processor. It can be used to generate security keys and um, or generate random numbers. But currently, it isn't working inside Windows, so we can only check GPU pass through. Okay. So Windows boots up. And uh, first of all, we can check that we're running inside the Beehive VM. So if we're looking at our system module, it uh, says, yes, we are running inside Beehive. And after that, we can that our GPU is working properly. And if you check the device manager, you can find our GPU. And if you check the properties, it says, yes, it's working. Okay, so let's start some graphical loads. I installed the Fermat benchmark. It's an open GL benchmark. And it has a GPU stress test. And yeah, like you can see, if we start our uh, graphical loads, they, um, yeah, we get near, nearly 500 or 600 uh, frames per second. 
in our application. So yeah, we have access to the full power of our GPU. And even if you check the temperature of Windows, you can see um, that it recognizes the GPU and the GPU is busy with some 3D stuff. Okay, so after checking um, that it's working for Windows, um, let me go over to start and Linux VM to show you TPM password. Yeah, maybe some additional hints. So if um, the screen is lagging or um, if you're wondering why I'm using a very um, low resolution, it's because, uh, it's because of the KVM switch because it's not the fastest switch. Okay, so let's run Ubuntu. Um, yeah. Okay, so as you can see, we're in the grab menu to boot Ubuntu. And now Ubuntu shows a splash screen and we are up. You can also check inside Ubuntu to if um, the group password works well. So you can start a small graphical application. And yeah, also, as you can see, we get an incredible, incredible high number of frames per second. So GPU password is working well. GPM password, we can. Uh, and the self test. And if we check the return code of the self test, it uh, reports zero. So everything works fine. So check to get some random numbers of the TPM module. And if you repeat that command, uh, you see you always get some different numbers. Okay. So that's it with my live demonstration. Let me continue with my presentation. Okay, so first of all, let's check the performance of our GPU. And this slide, you can see the 2D performance compared between Beehive and the bare metal system. And if you compare those numbers, uh, you can see we get about 80% of the 2D performance of a bare metal system inside Beehive. You can also check the 3D performance of our GPU. And if you compare those numbers, you get about 90% of our GPU. So you get nearly the full power of your GPU inside your Beehive VM. Well, after um, yeah, showing you my live demonstration, I will, go, I will go a bit into details how it works. So first of all, I will start with AMD because it's the easiest run, um, because it just uses the standard PCI password, which is already supported by Beehive. However, due to some minor issues with PCI pass-through, um, it uh, will only be supported by FreeBSD 14 current. And additionally, it only works on Windows because for Linux, um, you will require the video BIOS of your GPU. So you have to, first of all, extract your video BIOS. There are several different ways to do so, and I won't go into details. Um, yeah, if you want to have more details, uh, please contact me. And yeah, after you have extracted your video BIOS, you have to pass it uh, to Beehive, uh, to your Beehive VM, which isn't possible currently. Okay, but if you use um, GPU pass-through, you may see some issues. So first of all, um, it could be that you have a black screen after rebooting your VM. And I'm not really sure if it's caused by a hardware bug because some AMD GPUs um, are facing a reset bug. And I don't know, um, yeah, if it's also the case on my GPU and maybe on yours too. Additionally, AMD released with this Ryzen CPUs integrated graphic cards, 
and but they aren't supported by my current Beehive patches. Okay, let's go on to Intel GPUs. So um, I'm only focusing on the integrated Intel GPUs. I don't uh, try to path through a dedicated Intel GPU. Um, yeah, like AMD, it's based on the standard PCI pass-through. However, Intel has some um, non-standard PCI resources you have to um, pass to the guest, uh, which isn't, um, yeah. And additionally, there are some requirements because on Intel systems, the GPU is always on PCI slot two. And so the Intel driver depends on it. And to use GPU pass-through, you always have to locate your GPU at PCI slot two. Additionally, your LPC bridge has to be at PCI slot uh, 31. And your LPC bridge should have the same uh, IDs like your real APC. LC, um, Intel driver, won't uh, recognize your GPU. Okay, so last but not least, um, let's have a look at NVIDIA. Currently, it's a work in progress, so I have no patches to enable GPU pass through for NVIDIA. Um, but it's a dedicated GPU, so it's similar like AMD pass through. However, there are some more obstacles because, first of all, NVIDIA cards mirror their PCI config space into some MMRI registers. So Behive has to trap them and emulate them. Additionally, memory type range registers uh, needs to be emulated by Behive uh, for the NVIDIA driver to work properly. And um, the last ob obstacle is the newest NVIDIA driver because um, for a long time, NVIDIA doesn't support GPU password for his customer um, GPUs. So we have some open questions. Um, yeah, that we have to answer before we can create a patch for a GPU password of NVIDIA cards. As I mentioned, the NVIDIA driver doesn't support GPU password for a long time. And currently, it's not clear if uh, only the Windows driver or also the Linux driver supports GPU pass-through or if it's limited to KVM or uh, something else. So yeah, so the second point, we um, need to check if um, the NVIDIA driver only works with, uh, if it detects the KVM signature or if it also works with the Hive signature. Additionally, it's not clear whether we need a video bias like on AMD. And I heard of some um, reset issues of NVIDIA cards too. So I have to check that. Okay, after explaining GPU pass through, um, let's have a look at the graphics output protocol. It's the graphic driver of the UEFI. And currently, the UEFI doesn't contain the GOP driver. So we won't be able to get graphical output from your EFI shell, boot menu, or grab menu, or if you're installing, installing a new OS, you won't be able to get a, a display output. So, um, but there's another issue with the GOP driver because each C uh, GPU requires a different GOP driver. And we can't include all each GOP driver and each GOP driver version for each possible GPU. So the solution would be to include the GOP driver as ROM file. And so, yeah, and normally the GOP driver is included into the video BIOS of your AMD or NVIDIA graphics card. Okay, after focusing on GPU pass through, let's have a check on TPM2 pass through. And it yeah, really works straightforward. So first of all, we read uh, which physical resources are used by the TPM device. After that, we um, map them one-to-one -one into the guest. So we use the same addresses for those resources. And 
Lastly, we uh, create some ACPI tables for the guests to recognize the TPM module. Yeah, and uh, maybe some limitations to these pass through. I only tested it on Intel's FTPM2 device. So I don't know if a uh, um, TPM module uh, works too. And as he has said, um, Windows currently can't detect the TPM device. Okay, if you're now interested in how to use those new features, um, when you have my patch Beehive. Uh, that's the Beehive command I was using to start my VM. And if you closely check it, there are only two parts you have to add. First of all, you have to add a ROM file to your um, GPU password device. And um, yeah, so it's either the video BIOS or the GOG driver. Um, yes, and then it works. For TPM, you just have to add a new option and say you want to add a TPM 2D password device. So let's see which systems are supported. First of all, I would recommend you to download the graphics driver in your FreeBSD house because I noticed, for example, that the Intel graphics driver is unable to get unloaded. So if you load the Intel graphics driver, you won't be able to boot a Beehive VM with GPU pass-through. Additionally, because of the ROM file, um, we always need to boot the Beehive VM with UEFI. Uh, but for GPU pass-through, all common operating systems are supported. So Windows, Linux, FreeBSD, all are supported. And of course, you have the same requirements like um, PCI pass-through, so you need uh, VDD or AMDD. Okay, so for AMD GPUs, I'm using an E8860 for my researches, but from some FreeBSD users, I heard that uh, others and URL graphics card should work too, but you may encounter some reboot issues. And especially for Linux, um, and I guess for FreeBSD too, a video bias will be mandatory to get uh, GPU password working. For Intel GPUs, you need a um, CPU from generation three to nine. So from Ivy Bridge to Coffee Lake refresh. Newer uh, CPUs aren't supported currently, but I'm going to work on that. And another um, architecture which isn't so uh, supported is uh, Apollo Lake. Yeah, and for, for NVIDIA GPUs, as it's um, still work in progress, we need to determine which GPUs are supported and which aren't supported. The TPM pass-through is much easier. Um, it doesn't require VTD or AMDV, so it should be easier to pass through the TPM device because you only need Standard, um, uh, the standard hypervisor extensions of Intel and AMD CPUs. But uh, yeah, currently it's only supported by Linux. Okay, so now you know how it works. And um, if you want to try and test it, you can just follow me on Fabricator. I created for each um, pass through an own uh, patch set. And yes, so you can get some information on this side. But even better, you can just follow our back of uh, GitHub repository because we cloned have uh, reforked FreeBSD and the ADK2. And yes, yeah, you should have a look at my own branches where you can see all patches that are required to um, enable GPU and TPM to pass through. And um, yeah, maybe a small hint. So these uh, branches aren't complete yet, but in the near future, I'm going to up 
update all of uh, those repositories. And of course, if you have some questions, uh, you can just uh, mail me. Okay, so thank you all for your attention. And I hope you enjoyed my presentation. And if you have some questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Thank you. Thanks. Um, we do have some questions on IRC that I'll relay over to you. Um, so the first one someone asked is AMD TPM pass through or is AMD's TPM different from Intel's? Um, and I, I presumably what they're asking, I guess, is have you thought about supporting TPM pass through for AMD systems? Um, yeah, currently, I'm, I was only testing it on an Intel platform. So I can, uh, yeah, I only know that it works for Intel, but I never tested it in AMD. So um, I can't say anything to AMD, but um, it should be very similar. So that we, first of all, get the physical resources the AMD TPM uses. And after that, we pass things in to the guest. Okay, uh, another question we had is uh, someone asked if you had any thoughts about adding, I guess at the low end of the Intel GPU pass-through support about adding support for Sandy Bridge. Um, mm, yeah, so I tested Sandy Bridge, but there was a problem with Sandy Bridge and um, I read um, that some Sandy Bridge CPUs have a uh, bug in the VTD engine. And I don't know if it's caused by this bug or not, because when I started a Sandy Bridge um, a VM, the yeah Windows uh, the Windows Device Manager told me everything is working properly, but on my physical screen I only saw some random uh, colors. So the driver says everything is okay, but my physical uh, display says it's not. And then I had one more question so far, uh, which is someone has asked, have you done any tests with systems that contain multiple GPUs? Um, I guess that can be either passing GPUs through to multiple guests, like one per guest, or possibly passing multiple GPUs through to a single guest. Mm -hmm. Sadly, I didn't test this. Because our industrial PCs mostly don't have um, yeah, a fan for cooling. So having a system with multiple GPUs um, would get very, um, very warm, very hot. So <laughs> most of our uh, PCs don't have multiple GPUs, and I didn't test it. But I think it should uh, work too. Okay, so have we any uh, more questions? I'm looking, but I don't see any more. I think, although some folks have said thanks for answering their questions. So, um, thank you. Okay, we got one more question from YouTube, which is someone has asked, do you have any idea about a time frame for supporting GPU pass through support for NVIDIA? Um, and also, do you have hardware available to you for testing? Maybe, I don't know if that means they're offering you hardware, but perhaps the question is, do you need hardware? Would that be helpful for you um, to work on NVIDIA support? Um, so maybe you saw on Twitter that um, um, I I was working with a FreeBSD user and was uh, he's now able to pass through his NVIDIA um, GPU. So it is possible, and I want to work on it in the near future. Uh, I'm also having a NVIDIA card. I can where I can test GPU pass um, Yeah, so it's may maybe it's not the uh, newest run, <laughs> but uh, yeah, as I saw on AMD pass-through, it um, shouldn't matter if you use an older GPU or a newer GPU, it should be the same. 
uh, yeah, so um, I hopefully uh, can create this year a patch for NVIDIA because yeah, as I said, it's working, but um, yeah, I have to do some cleanup in my patches and um, I also have to check some um, open questions which I presented to you. Okay, and we had one more question that I think um, uh, Chris in Zoom asked, can you pass one GPU to multiple guests? No, so GPU, that's um, what GPU pass through uh, is. So you give one guest full access to your GPU. So um, yeah, you don't split up the GPU to different guests. You gave it to run VM to get the full performance. But um, yeah, as you as the guest has full contr control about the GPU, it's impossible to use it for uh, different VMs. So maybe um, some um, workstation GPUs like um, will be able to create multiple virtual virtual GPUs, and it may be possible to. Uh, pass each virtual GPU to a different VM, but um, the GPU pass patches I was talking about are focusing on uh, uh, pass through the whole GPU. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your talk. Um, thanks again. Uh, so I think we're going to go ahead and go to our next break before our next talk starts. So we're going to take a break for about 10 minutes or so. So if folks have more questions, feel free to follow up <coughs> over on Slack or IRC. And also, um, feel free to wander over to the hallway track during the break. Um, we'll be back in a few minutes for our next talk. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>